Two years ago, I told my friend that the United States would be a top tier nation in terms of talent, with just one thing potentially holding the national team back. That thing being coaching. I hope I'm wrong, but the final international window kicked off with Nike deciding to reward America with an impressive tie-dye royal blue kit and a copy-pasted PSG warm-up kit. But somehow, Nike's US World Cup jersey launch wasn't the worst part of the final international window, as Greg Berhalter decided that the only way to play is to play like Manchester City. Unfortunately, Greg Berhalter is no Pep Guardiola, and the United States is no Manchester City. Who'd have thought? Prior to America's friendlies against Japan and Saudi Arabia, most of the conversation was around the last few World Cup spots for their 26-man squad, of which Berhalter said about 85% of the team was already figured out. Side note, I'll make an in-depth squad prediction within the week as I don't think that the squad itself affects how the team functions overall, and what I mean by that is that any player that results in significant change in tactics will already be 100% in the roster or 100% out. Now, tactically, America lined up in their usual 4-3-3, however, there was a clear emphasis on possession with the team being more risk averse developing play through both center backs, and additionally, looking to pass the ball at the back. Basically, this style is meant to draw the opposition in and work the ball from defense to midfield in a more steady buildup of play. Additionally, the team in possession has autonomy over the game and can pick and choose the right moments to go forward. So theoretically, it would be an incredibly beneficial way for the US to play. However, it begins falling apart from the back line both Walker Zimmerman and Aaron Long failing to successfully pass the ball under pressure. The resulting high turnover rate breaking down any sort of attacking movement that the team would even have. Looking at the Japan game alone, current starting center backs Aaron Long and Walker Zimmerman accounted for 18 losses of possession, and that's with Long only being on the field for 45 minutes, not the full 90 that Zimmerman was. This graphic here was shown and criticized a ton by a lot of mainstream media, but the blame isn't solely on the center backs, as it requires both outside backs and midfielders to correctly move into space. In that second clip I showed earlier, Matt Turner is receiving the ball from the left side of the field, and he's looking to swing the ball over to the right side since that's where less defenders will be, so more players will be open. However, look at America's positioning. Dest is looking to get forward on the right side of the field, and that leaves tons of space in behind him. Luca De La Torre tries to react to that, but it's too slow. Because of that, he's not wide enough for Zimmerman to actually pass to him. Zimmerman has to look forward for the pass, and Brendan Aronson's run's delayed because Luca De La Torre's run's delayed, so nothing here is working out. You have to be proactive in the space you move into when you're trying to maintain possession. Many times when it looks like there's no correct option for the center backs to pass to, it's because of a stagnant midfield, rather than the player on the ball failing to find the pass. And while I don't agree with Bear Halter's choice to start Walker Zimmerman and Aaron Long together at center back, I don't think the blame's solely on them. I honestly would say that the blame may even be more on the midfield than the center backs in this situation, as it looked like they didn't really know what space to move into or how to play out of the high pressure that Japan put the US under that really forced a lot of these turnovers. As for America's performance in the final third, I really don't think much can be said. The failure to correctly play out the back makes for less and less opportunities going forward, and that can be seen by the 11 total shots and two shots on goal they managed in two games, of which aren't against high quality teams. I can agree that Japan's a decent side, but it's not as if they have more raw talent than the US, not that that means that America's the better team, but Saudi Arabia on the other hand, I would rate as one of the weakest teams attending the World Cup. So where did the United States go from here? In my opinion, the best case scenario for the results of this international window is that Greg Berhalter was simply looking at whether or not the United States could play a possession style, and from these two games, concluded it's not possible. And I know he didn't earn it, but let's give him the benefit of the doubt there, uh, since 
I think anybody could tell that the U.S. looked terrible in both of these games. But I don't think that excuses Bearhalter from criticism. And that's where I'm probably most frustrated. Why would you wait till you're two months away from the three most important games that this nation's seen in the last eight years to test a style of play? And the style you're testing requires your least technical players, Long and Zimmerman, to execute consistently. I know this video is about specifics and a lot of specific examples of failures of players, of coaching, whichever, but I don't think you have to look into specifics to criticize the coaching itself, since it feels like a very common trend with this team, which sucks because a lot of these players are starting on Premier League teams, are scoring the Champions League, and are performing at levels that no American generation has performed at ever. That's all for me. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you think about the video and I will have a squad prediction coming out in the next few days.